you've got something, right? Well, if you don't have it tied down to your kit, you don't have something. A lot of the gear that you get, you'll open it up. And if you don't know what these are, they're tie down loops. Okay, they're already pre-stitched in to the piece of kit put in by the factory because they know that you've got certain things that you do not want to lose. So they provide this tie down point for you. Now there's a lot of different cordages that you can use to tie down your stuff. This is just standard 550 paracord. It's gutted, so I pulled the innards out. I've experimented with the um, micro paracord, okay, which is about half the size of regular 550. I've even taken the inner, when I gut the paracord, the inners, and taken the individual strands and experimented with those. When you get too thin, it's very difficult to manage. It's almost like you're grabbing at, you know, clear fishing line. This gutted 550 paracord for me is the best. Now attaching things to your kit is quite the challenge, okay? Because a lot of your kit doesn't come with these tie downs sewn into it from the factory. Where it gets real tricky and you gotta be creative is tying down gear that's on your weapon system or on your helmet. For example, this red dot, you think it's on here tight. Well, you take a fall and this thing pops off, you lose your red dot, you got problems. So even the red dot needs to be tied down and secured to the weapon. So I'm gonna take about, let's say three feet of gutted paracord where I've just cut it and I've pulled the innards out of the paracord. And then I'm going to take one of the pieces of the inner cord, if you can see it here, just happens to be red, usually they're white. And I'm going to attach it to the gutted paracord so I can easily fish it through this little opening. If not, it can be very difficult. And the way that I attach that is with a timber hitch. Now, if you're new to this timber hitch, here's the way that you teach people when they're just learning. Just take a piece of cordage, bend it, wrap it three times around itself. One, two, three, and you'll be left with that little hole. Bring the end through that hole. And you now have a little timber hitch. So we've got our little timber hitch attached to the paracord, the gutted paracord. And now I'm going to try and fish it through this little opening. Now you have to be careful. I don't know if you can see in here. But there's all kinds of little controls at the back of this red dot that are inside here, exposed. So we don't want to mess with those. Making sure I'm nowhere near. Okay, so you see I got it through. And I'm way up front where there's nothing hanging down. I don't want to damage anything. There's a little spring in here. You can tighten it with this little nut. And I'm going to gently work this through. And there we go, we're through. We didn't damage anything underneath. And now we've made our run around this red dot. Now I'm looking for somewhere to secure that doesn't get in the way with the controls. That's the tricky part, All right? Because I know I, I can see that I've got a spring here. Can you see inside there? Got a little spring back here. I don't want to interfere with this. That's my selector for what kind of red dot I want. But you don't have too much choice. You got you to gotta secure it somewhere. So I think this is going to be a good spot right here. So I'm just going to make an overhand knot. Okay, real simple. Like that. And then I'm going to come back and put a stopper knot behind it, which is just another overhand knot. Okay, and that's not going anywhere. Now I need to secure it somewhere here to the actual weapon system. So, what do I have? Well, I can't go here. You know, here's our dust cover. So I can't be anywhere here where it's, you know, interfering with the function of the weapon. So I think right here is going to be the sweet spot. I'm going to come around the handguard, basically. I'm going to make a little overhand knot. Come back. This doesn't have to be super tight, but got to be secured somehow. And then I'm just going to put in another overhand knot behind it. I want this taut because I don't want this paracord getting in the way of my functions. That's about it. I'll put a little tension on it. 
And there you can see, I've tied this here and this here. Now for safety, you could put another overhand knot behind it, right? Because we're just using them for stopper knots. But I don't think that's going anywhere. And then I'll simply come back and trim this. Leave about three eighths of an inch. And now I'll come back with a lighter and secure these little ends of the gutted paracord. So I've got my lighter. I'm be real careful not to burn any of my equipment. And once you've got it tied off, you want to come to that tie off and test it. Now be careful, this is delicate, you know, equipment. So just see, make sure your knots aren't slipping out. But there we go. So my red dot is now secured to the upper of my AR. I'm going to talk to you about subscriptions. Now, if you dig my content, you want to see more of it, you subscribing, sharing, liking, whatever it is you do on YouTube helps out the channel, helps me out. So I appreciate it. Here I've got my Baofeng in its little radio pouch. And same thing, right? Communications are crucial. And the radio pouch is high quality. This goes over the top of it, right? It's secure. Well, you take a tumble, you lose this thing, you got no communications, you got problems. So even my Baofeng is going to be tied down to my kit. I've taken gutted paracord here and created just a little loop. So I've just done an overhand knot that gives you a loop. I put in this one inch S beaner here. Now on the end of this paracord on one end, I'm going to put a little bowline. Okay. So this is just a quick, this is called a flip bowline. Okay. Come across and I want it to be decent size. That feels good. That's about an inch. And then on the other side, I'm going to put another bowlin, another whip bowlin. Okay. So I'm going to whip it, bring that end around. And then I'm simply going to come around my belt. I'm going to find a good place. That here looks good. So I've come around the belt. Here's my, my um, bowlin whip that I made. I'm going to bring the end of the gutted paracord through. We can clean this up afterwards where we want it. But now I'm attached to my belt. I will now attach this bowl in here on the end to this little S beaner. Okay. That's why we want these S beaners because you can see I've got one loop attached on the right and now I've got a place to attach the other. Okay. So we are connected. Now all of this takes patience and time. <laughs> you can see it's, it's kind of a messy procedure. Okay, I'm in there. I'll re-secure my top flap here. And there we go. The reason I'm not tying it off to this pouch is because that pouch might pop off. Say I get snagged on something, boom. Here we go. We're falling, this gets ripped off. Well, my belt, it's probably going to stay on me. And now we are secure, right? I am attached to this belt. So now I have a chance to rescue my communications, my radio. Your water is life. It's crucial. Okay. So if you lose this water, you take a tumble down a ravine or something and your Nalgene choo, flies away. You got no water. So for the Nalgene, we're going to use a Canadian jam knot. I'm going to start off with about probably five feet of gutted paracord. I'm going to come to one end. And this is the Canadian jam knot. I'm going to come under and make a figure eight. Okay. The bottom. I'm going to come about three inches down from it. And I'm going to come up through a loop that I just, you know, made a little bend. I'm going to come to the end and I'm going to run the end through that loop and you'll see what we create. Pull that taut. And now this is a jam knot and it will bear down on itself. Okay. Super tight. And when you want to release that, you simply grab this end here, this tab, pull back. And you come right out of it. So that's what we're going to do on that end. And then again here, we're just going to do a real quick flip bowling. 
Okay. And we'll dress that up. Doesn't have to be too big. Okay, so we're just going to lasso this around the lid and it has a perfect little gap here. Okay, it's just like an eighth of an inch. And we're gonna work this back and forth until we are secure. And that's nice and tight. So now we have full control of this Nalgene. We're going to loosen this up. See, it comes right off. I'm gonna run this end that has a little bowlin and bring our remaining line with our Canadian jam knot up through that hole. You can see we've just secured that to the belt. We don't need any S-beaners for this because if we ever need to refill or hand our bottle to someone else, we can simply pull this tab and it comes right off. You have to be real careful with where all this excess goes, right? It can't just be dangling because now you've got snag hazards. So I'm going to take it here and just simply wind it down into its holder. It takes patience. It's kind of a pain. Get that in there, hide it. And we are good. Now this Nalgene is secured to my belt. That's a real quick look at how I secure my gear down to my kit. So that way if I take a tumble, I got a chance of recovering it.